Hey there. Welcome to Getting to Know. It's a show where you get to know more about people I think are interesting, and maybe you will too. If you want to keep up and see me stream live, you can follow my Twitch right here. Or you can tell me to go fuck myself. Thank you. Yo. Hey, Manuel. How you doing, man? Good, how are you? Very good. Do me a favor, if you can, and uh, just turn on your camera with a little camera oh, okay. icon. Sorry. No, you're fine. How are you? Uh, uh, I'm good. I'm great. Great. Good, Sorry. Uh, uh, yuck. Got it? Yeah, that should be good now. Okay. Man, you got a great camera. Mm, it's just like a ba basic Logitech. Uh... You have great light. What's the, is the lighting, what's the lighting situation like over there? I just have like a window like above me right here. Oh, like a sky window? Yeah, and I have like a, I also have like a pro light in front of me, but I didn't put it on. So. Oh wow, some great lighting there. How are you, man? Nice to see you. Thank you. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, thanks for making the time to to hang out with me. My pleasure. Um, how, how's your how's your day going? Good. Uh, um, with all the COVID thing, you know, I, I have kids, so the mornings is like uh, a dad uh, and school work at home. Oh, how, Which, uh, how, how old are your kids? So I have four kids. The oldest is 13. It's a boy. Uh -huh. And I, I have twins that are 10, boys also. And I have a daughter that's six. Hey, I have to ask you, you go to like parent-teacher conferences? Yeah. What are those like for you? <laughs> Do people, people Honestly, notice? Honestly, like, like I see people recognizing me, but usually people are very respectful. So yeah, they yeah. don't, you know. Well, you, uh, so can you just introduce yourself a little bit? I'm, I, I know who you are, and I'm sure people yeah. here know who you are. So I'm Manuel Ferrara. I'm 44 years old. Uh, I originally, I was born and raised in France, in Paris, France, and uh, started in Bonn 23 years ago, uh, came to L.A. 18 years ago. Um, I started streaming on Twitch four years ago. And uh, I'm having fun, man. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing what I love. This is how I always uh, did my life is like only do what I like. And it, yeah. it's, wor it's worked for me. So now you're on Twitch. Is that, has that become like your full-time gig because of COVID? Because are, are you able to shoot still with COVID? We just, uh, the industry just started shooting again. And um, it's like... Um, like everyone's tested now on set. Like, I mean, we usually the performers get tested for like STDs and shit like that. Yeah. And now everyone on top of the regular testing, we do also COVID testing the day before. Oh. And that, in that includes the crew, that includes, uh, you know, everyone on set. Uh, and the crew has on set to stay with, uh, sorry. The crew on set has to stay with um, with uh, with masks on, and yeah. we keep we keep the masks on until it's time to do the scene. This is Pucci. Hi, Pucci. Pucci. Yeah. Oh my God, it's so cute. What kind of dog is that? He's a pug. He's a six-month-old pug. Oh, he's freaking adorable. Yeah. He's fuck, a good boy. I love pugs. Do you have any other animals as well? Yeah, I have a. Uh, I have a lot of animals, actually. I have. Oh, come here! I have a. I have a Cavalier King Charles, also the Whoa. same age. But um, I live in a area in LA where uh, it's a lot of uh, horse properties. My okay. wife and I, we have we have horses. We have like uh, cats, dogs, chickens. We have so much, so many different type of animals. Wow! A, be a bearded dragon, a wife, an ex-wife. It's a lot of animals. <laughs> You keep the ex-wife in the in the in the backyard, or where do you put her? Yeah, pretty much. Well, I set up. Um, I have a pretty large um, uh, uh, property. Yeah. And on my property, I have a guest house, and because I had my sons with my ex-wife, uh, and I didn't want to be away from my kids. Yeah. Uh, so I offered my ex-wife if she wanted to move in the guest house, which is very separate. It's not like a it's not like a weird, like we don't have that type of relationship anymore. We yeah. became very good friends. And it's important for us to have our kids to grow up with their mom and with oh, their dad. That's beautiful. So they're able, they're able to see us every day. And also because I have my daughter with my actual wife, 
it allows my boys and my daughter to grow up together in yeah. the same environment and not like being split in different families. Yeah, yeah, because I imagine, um, I imagine. Well, I'm first off, I, it takes a, I think, because your 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 wife is Caden, right? Yeah, and and yeah. so it probably takes a a really big person like her, for instance, to be able to be like, yeah, your ex wife can live next to us. <laughs> yeah. I, I, on both ends, I think from my ex-wife and Andrew. from my wife, yeah. like they're like, they're very great. But you know, like my ex-wife and I, our relationship ended because it was supposed to end. You know, yeah. when you become more friends, just friends, and not, you know, uh, yeah. And then when Kaden and I got together, there was already some time that my ex and I were separated, and they actually kind of became really good friends. So, oh wow! Yeah, that's awesome. You have you have four children. Uh, yeah. How, how wait? How old is your your? That your I know of. That that I know oh of. shit! Come on, really? Wait, no. no. I'm I'm <laughs> you must be yeah. very potent. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. My oldest is thirteen. Thirteen. And uh, you know, a question I get a lot is like, "Well, how do you handle, you know, telling your kids about what you do for a living?" Uh, well, technically, I do it progressively. Uh you don't start you know like they start asking you what you do for a living before having a notion of sexuality yeah so when they when my oldest son first asked me for example uh i told him that i was making movies for adults so it's very oh. vague and and movies for adults when you're a young kid it it means probably like scary movies yeah you know or movies with bad words. Mm -hmm. So then later, I had to tell him that in the movies that that he makes, there are naked people in it. Okay. And then a, a little later, I had to explain to him that sometimes in the movies, that he's naked too. And then now he's 13. You know, we had the talk already, and yeah. he already understood, you know. Uh, and he's, uh, he's cool with it. And, Damn. you know, he's... Yeah. Well, I mean, I, yeah. I imagine that would be a very difficult conver conversation to have because obviously I think over, I think what you're doing is obviously the right approach because you're not like throwing it all at him, you know? Yeah, exactly. I, I, uh, I was very worried about how that would go. Yeah. And so far so good. Uh, he's a smart kid. Gets, you know, uh, he, uh, when we talked about it, it's like, Hey, listen, that like, I don't care about what you do for a living. What I see, what he sees is a dad that works maybe two hours a day. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, Cause I have my crew for like 18 years. I have the same crew. So they know their job. They do everything. I'm, I only go on set when I'm needed, which takes like probably two hours. Yeah. Yeah. And so it allows me to take my kids to school, to pick them up, to take them to do their sport, to do, to play with them, to yeah. do video games, to do like, I share so much with them that it's, it's, that's what really porn brought to me. Like, yes, I make really good money doing porn. Yes. I have sex with beautiful women, but the best thing that it brought to me is the time for my family, my loved yeah. ones, and also to do what I love to do in life. And that is now you do a lot of Twitch now. Like I do a lot of Twitch, I do a lot of sports, and I I spend a lot of time with my kids, which yeah. is you know I you know I, actually like Manuel, that's really nice to hear. <laughs> like you know Thanks. you yeah you're a great father, and like even though your industry is just like unfortunately demonized, like and people to some extent like some people demonize the adult industry, and which uh, which which. I wouldn't say rightfully so, but yeah. there are situations. There are situations where uh, our industry is very, very hard on people, mm -hmm. and and you know, like every industry, there are scumbags in any business. I mean, it's yeah. not like there there aren't scumbags on Twitch, you know. But uh, the majority True. of the people in the industry are pretty good people. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like recently, there was uh, the outings of who was it? It was like Ron Jeremy, I think, and. One yeah, well, it's more than outing. Uh, it's more than outing. Uh, he he got judged like like he was in court and you know found guilty. Yeah. So it's a, you know, um, but you know, in, in those tough times, a lot of people got attacked. I got attacked. Did you really? Uh, yeah, yeah, I got attacked for doing my job, and uh, <laughs> uh, a girl, 
went out and claimed that I did things to her she didn't want when in the video you see everything of like to the point like for example she said Manuel choked me during the scene but in the scene she tells me choke me oh you know what I mean well she's just asking so, for it at that point right you, you know and then she said well I was just acting I'm like but I can't read your mind if you tell me to choke you I, I'm gonna, gonna choke, choke you, you know? yeah because a lot of women not every woman but a lot of women like being choked during sex and if you ask me to uh, i will do it but Wait. you know a lot of uh, a lot of people were called that in my industry but also on twitch also yeah in watching pretty much a, any entertainment business uh, yeah people got called out and, and you've sometimes wrongfully. and you've been in the entertainment business like you said for 20 23 you've been doing porn 23 for 20, yeah three years yeah that's a long time to be you know, getting your wiener wet and some, you know, I, and I love it. <laughs> from, I, I loved it from the first day and yeah. to now, and and I'll st I'll keep loving it, man. I, I, I don't, I still don't see an angle like people always ask me, like, well, what's what's the negative about porn? I'm like, I, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, honestly. I mean, you get to have sex with like beautiful women. Yeah, you, you get to like make you know I don't know we'll we'll talk about like the pay differences between men and women because obviously there's mm -hmm. like some disparaging info there, um but you know you've obviously done very well for yourself you have all these like awards you have a beautiful wife you have great family you have a fucking house you have a fucking guest house man well for Christ's sake you you have a <laughs> guest house man and you're in California so you're obviously doing pretty yeah. well for yourself and I'm doing uh, okay yeah yeah so you grew up in France. And, Paris and Paris, suburb, the suburb of Paris, yeah, suburb of Paris. Um, and did you grow up? Did you have any siblings or anything like that? Yeah, I have an older brother, older sister. Uh, I'm the young one of the family. Oh wow! So, and obviously, your family knows what you do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, has that like affected them at all? Sorry. Has that affected them in any way, like in any adverse or negative ways? No, you know, like uh, like uh, all good parents and family. Uh, they want what's best for you and they want you to stay healthy. Yeah. Of course, there is huge stigma around my industry that, you know, if you do porn, you have to be a, a drug addict yeah. or a prostitute. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm neither of those. Uh, I'm not going to say there isn't, there aren't in my industry, but again, like you can be a cleaning lady and a drug addict too. So yeah. nowadays, anyone can be, you know. No, true. Which, you, you know, uh, once they realize that when I, once I explain to them my industry is not what they think it is, mm -hmm. made them feel a little better. And also, once they saw that, you know, I do my business, I do well, and I don't change. Same for them. Like, as long as I'm happy and healthy, that's all that matters for them. The health concerns, I mean, you said that, that mm -hmm. porn is kind of reopened now. Um, mm -hmm. Are they doing, like, rapid r rapid testing for COVID? Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it, we get tested the day before and you get the result in the morning so you can work uh that's that day what and the what it, the the like standard like the industry testing how how often does that happen and what is that called so we do every 14 days testing which includes uh hiv gonorrhea chlamydia hpv syphilis uh i'm sure i'm missing something else is that uh, is now, that called the gold now, standard I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, you know, and also we have a way to check. Um, so legally, you cannot check people's results, mm -hmm. but we have like a de database where you can check if people are available to work, which means oh. they are negative. Oh. If it says, if it says not, not available for work, it's either they didn't retest yet or they have something and you take antibiotics and a week later you're able to come back. So it's like a catalog of available adult like porn stars. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's kind of cool. So you just like scroll through the database and you're like, who do I want to have sex with this week for a video? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I don't do it that way. I go through, uh, I go through agencies. There are a lot of agencies in uh, LA. Okay. And cause it comes also with pictures of the girls. It yeah. comes with what, like details of what they do, what they don't do. Uh, rates mm -hmm. you can find out the rates through the agency and all that so you must have a lot of people because i think probably now more than ever right like 
people probably would want to work with you because it would boost their careers in a way, right? Like a lot of like new stars and stuff. I feel yeah. like I feel like most of the time when the girls want to work with me, it's because they know I'm gonna fuck them well. <laughs> <laughs> My man, holy shit! Okay. You know, uh, is it gonna give them a boost? Yeah, maybe a little bit. I don't know. Like Oof. I feel like I feel like if a girl is good, that's what gonna be her best boost whoever she works with yeah damn damn man well you might be the most confident man i've ever met in my entire life really well i wasn't it wasn't always the case no why <laughs> when when did it change well because when you're a teenager you grow up with doubts we you grow up also with uh failures you know sometimes yeah. you're into a girl and the girl is not into you and you mm -hmm. realize that maybe you know not every girl's gonna be into you yeah and then uh, I feel like my confidence uh, really came out when I realized that I didn't give a fuck if a girl was not interested in me because yep. if she don't want me, I'll probably find another one that wants exactly. me. Exactly. You know, I realized like, you, you know, uh, if you put your ego aside and you don't have to hate, like, because a lot of the guys, they're like into a girl and once they find out the girl's not into them, then they start hating the girl. Yeah. It's the healthy way the best way is to be like oh okay her loss next mm -hmm. goodbye thank you you know and without having to hate that girl because she don't want you you know like, yeah. have you ever felt like you know you ever heard of the mendoza scale before no so there's this thing called the mendoza scale and it's like the hotter a woman is the crazier she is the uglier she is the like genuine and like nicer she is do you think that's a thing no you don't think oh, that's no. a thing met plenty of ugly crazy bitches <laughs> wait, wait. i still have to i still have to find a pretty one that's not a crazy one though <laughs> wait i feel like i feel like they all are crazy oh you're fucking telling me man you're fucking telling me Yo, and sometimes so in a good way don't get me wrong sometimes yeah. cra crazy can be really good yeah i wait what what is it like when you have to fuck someone who's just like let's say like theoretically, Manuel, that like one of the one of the performers you're working with like sucks dick at sucking dick. What do you do about it? Well, it depends on the way. Uh, listen, uh, one idea that people have of the porn industry is that we have to do things. Yeah. We don't have to do things. If something doesn't go my way, I just kill it. Yeah. I'm like you know what, you know, but it's not gonna be like a dick sucking skill that's gonna stop me. You know, it's more an attitude thing. If I yeah. feel like the girl doesn't like being here, mm -hmm. if you don't want to be here, I'm not going to make you be here. Like, I'm going to send you home. Like, if your only motivation is the money, and don't get me wrong, it's a great motivation. Yeah. If that's the only thing, you shouldn't be doing porn because that's how you're going to fuck your head up and that's how you're going to have issues later. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you're not in the industry anymore. And that, that seems like a really prevalent thing because uh, one of the biggest things that people, I, I feel like, speak about in, the, in relation to the porn industry is that, like, people end up having, like, long-lasting, like, mental, mental health issues from, like, either entering the industry or kind of just well, existing I, in I it. Well, I feel like the people that have mental issues after the industry is because they already had mental issues Coming into before it. Getting, becoming into it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I don't think uh, the industry is going to give you more mental issues. It can hurt your feeling. It can hurt your ego. Yeah. If you have big plans to become a big star, make a lot of money, and you end up not being that recognized in the industry, not working as much as you thought you would work, and you end up having to quit because you don't get booked anymore, that's yeah. going to create a lot of resentment towards the industry. What is like... Some yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Finish. No, no. I was about to say versus someone who's like very successful, makes a lot of money with the yeah. industry. Well, when they they decide they quit the industry versus the industry quit them. Yep. That's gonna be probably a more like like uh, uh, how you say that in English. Like real realistic thing. Like a softer version to go out. Oh, okay. And, gotcha. You know. What so like you've so is so as a male as male talent like twenty three years, like mm -hmm. that's a long you've had like a long shelf life as a as a porn star, like yeah. that's like and you're still busy right like shooting's good you're still shooting super busy super busy and um well I also have my 
my production company. I, 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 it's been like 18 years since I, my, uh, I started my own production company. And, mm -hmm. you know, I still work here and there. Uh, I made a deal with a big uh, porn company as a performer too. Okay. Uh, because my goal was always to make more money with working the least I can. Yeah, I love that. You know? Yep. I love I love that too. And by making that deal, it allowed me to focus more on my products mm -hmm. while working a minimum times every month with making a maximum money. Yeah. So your production company, how you've you've had it for eighteen years, you said? Yeah. yeah. And is it full service, like uh shooting, audio, uh like yeah. re recruitment, everything like that? Yeah, yeah, I have my whole crew and everything. The only thing I don't do myself is uh, distribution. Okay. Uh, but I have a company called George Jordan uh, who distributes everything for me. And then uh, I also help my wife starting a company who's very, very, very successful now. It's called Deeper, and uh, she's doing great, great products too. And Yeah, I've heard, of, I've heard of Deeper before. Yeah, um, she's doing very well with that. It, so she start. When did she start deeper? About three and a half years ago. It's funny because uh, she used to be a performer. Yeah. And then uh, when we started going out, she decided she was already like feeling like she was long enough in the industry and decided to stop. Yeah. And uh, there was a month where I, I don't know why. Like I felt like I didn't want to. I was supposed to direct a movie. And I was like, oh, man, I'm, I don't feel like directing this movie. And she was like, why don't I do it? And huh? I was like, okay, let's see what you yeah. can do. So so I let her direct it, write it, and I was overseeing. But she did so good that I ended up barely doing anything. Really? And, and right away, she did something that was very successful and then wanted to start doing her own. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. I helped her a little bit. I'm not trying to get any credit for success. No, 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 no. Well, that's called Everything you're supporting her on what she wanted to do. And yeah, uh, and, and the same way that she's always supported me and yeah. what I do. So, like, you know, uh, and she's killing it, man. Like, she, uh, the last two years, she won uh, Avian Director of the Year. Wow. Two years in yeah, a row? She, two years in a row. Wow. Damn. Yeah, she's doing, yeah, she's doing very well. How did, how did you and, how did you and Kaden meet? It's super funny because uh, when she first joined the industry, her very first scene was with me. Oh, shit. And that first day, she was so difficult. Yeah. Like, really, really a pain in the ass. And, you know, like, sometimes people can be difficult on set, and you're like, fuck, fuck this bitch, which yeah. is what I did for, like, for the next three years, I refused to work with her. Oh, I thought you meant you fucked her for the next three years. No, <laughs> no, no, I did, I did fuck her that one day, but yeah. she was such a pain, I was like, man, I'll never work with this bitch. You yeah. Know? And, um, it, it's funny because, like, a lot of things happened to her that day that you don't know that would put anyone in a, in a bad mood. For example, she had a boyfriend when she started porn and the guy was very supportive and very like, Hey, yeah. Like, yeah, you want to do porn? Great, great, great. Yeah. And the day of the shoot, the guy was like, we're done. You're doing uh... porn. I can't be like, which, which can happen. It's not something that's easy to handle, yeah. you know, but the guy was so supportive and the day of it. So already she came in, uh, uh, doing that scene with all this in her head, which mm -hmm. would put anyone kind of out of it. Yeah. Um, she was in a bad mood. Exactly, and and she was she was gorgeous, but a pain in my ass. So yeah. I decided not to work with her again. And then three years later, she signed a contract with a company I used to work for a lot. And they told me, "Hey, we just signed her under contract, and the first thing she asked is to work with you." Oh shit! Which I found out later that because they knew the story. I found out later that they said that to me to kind of like make me do it. Mm -hmm. uh, she was not against working with me, but it's not like she was like dying to work with me. Yeah, they kind of uh, set you up on it. Right. And I told them, I'm, because I was very good friend with the director, I told them, hey, I, uh, I will uh, work with her. Uh, but if she breaks my balls, I'll pack my shit, go home, and you'll still pay me. And they agreed. That. Yeah. And turned out that day was amazing, and then we uh, 
fucked on a regular basis, you know, and then uh, uh, broke your balls in a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then uh, the, the thing is, she was in a relationship at that time. I was in a relationship at that time. So we would end up fucking a lot during sets. Yeah. Sometimes while they were filming another scene downstairs, her and I would escape in a room upstairs and fuck, which oh, shit. Cre created some problem because sometimes the noise we were making was louder than the actual <laughs> noise. <in> the <laughs> but, uh, and then one day she became available. I became available. We met and uh, we've been together since. It's eight years now. Wow. Yeah. So did you, did you date people outside of the industry before you like met yeah. Aiden or? Well, I, I mostly people in the industry, but yeah. I also dated people outside of the industry. Yeah. How did that uh, work out for you? Well, there is like pros and cons on both sides. Um, when you when you are in a relationship with someone that's not in the industry, again, it goes back to their imagination and what they think happens on set. Yeah, a lot of the people they're not in the industry, they think it's a giant orgy on set, like the cameraman, the cameraman and the sound guy gets their dick sucked and everything, when really it's yeah. a very professional environment. And I, I thought the know, same thing until I was on set once. Yeah, it's not like being on set is the, le the least erotic thing you can, you, you can be part of because yeah. you see all the, you know, the stop and go, the, uh, the director telling you what to do, where to do it, how to do it sometimes. I'm not that right. kind of director. In my movies, I let people fuck. But sometimes you work for a company that they're going to want to tell you what to do. Yeah. You know? And so it's hard to be because they're going to think that you're always like fucking, fucking, fucking when really uh, the performers usually uh, like maybe 95% of the time mm -hmm. they keep themselves from fucking before the scene because they want to give their best during the scene. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It makes sense. Uh, yeah. But even then it stays sex. And when you're in relationship with someone that's not in the industry, unless that person is like in the swinger side, yeah, uh, it's still going to be a problem. You know, do you, um, do you find like, Obviously, your enjoyment of sex has not changed, and if anything, yeah. you've, you're you know you've probably really found out what like really you know gets you going, and you probably understand like a woman's body better than me and however many people are in the chat right now, including the women that are in the chat. I would assume. <laughs> um, what tips and tricks would you give to aspiring uh, sex connoisseurs such as yourself? Um, when it comes to either making love to a woman or fucking them? Well, the worst ideal you can have is to think that every woman are the same. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to, um, Nash Star knows the Spider-Man technique. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, you need to adapt to each woman. You cannot have sex with every woman the same way. Yeah. My luck is, the thing that turns me on the most is giving orgasm and giving a lot of pleasure to the girl. So I will go to like crazy extent to give orgasm or to make the girl come. Yeah. And sometimes like uh, sometimes there are things that might not be so much my thing mm -hmm. but because I know the girl loves this, then I'm going to do it. You're going to do it. You know? And that can be anything, you know. Uh, the most important is to try softly little things as you go. See the way the girl reacts. If you see a girl reacting in a positive way, keep going that way. Try yeah. to push a little more. And if you see that it might not be her thing, stop doing it. It's the same thing when you lick a pussy. Not every woman likes their pussy leak the same way. Like the same way with men. Not every man likes to, that their dick suck the same way. Yeah. So try little things, and then when it works, go keep going that way. Just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Wow. What's your is your is your stamina like? You're are you you're physically active, right? You like work out and stay fit. Yeah, I, I yeah I, I hate lifting weight and things like that, but I do a lot of sports. I play a lot of tennis, basketball. I do my like push ups, abs, like all this kind of shit. But so uh, your stamina's through the fucking roof still. You can still pump it out as much. 
Yeah, I, I, even when I was, uh, you know, um, my shape has always been up and down. Like sometimes I'm in great shape, sometimes I'm a little chubby. But uh, like same thing. Through the years, you learn how to like save your energy for the right time. Yeah. You know, the right moment and everything. You don't need like a crazy cardio to be good at fucking. That's like uh, how Steve Jobs didn't bust any nuts like past him having his last kid because he wanted to conserve his energy to be able to create the iPod. Oh, really? Did he yeah. no fap? He no fapped for like years. Yeah, he would like edge himself into eternity. Oh, Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah. But, you know, no fap is bad, guys. I think no it's a fucking shame. You know what else is a shame, Manuel? Tell me. Free porn. Free porn. So it it was for a while because it hurt a lot of people in the industry. Yeah. But now it's evolving and changing into something different where now you make partnerships with those people and yeah. now you can use them to make money and, you know, uh, it's not like it was in the beginning where they were just s stealing your content and putting it for free and then they collected money. Now you can make money with them and they can bring you a lot of money. Oh, so for like, say, uh, say someone uploads a video of you up on the hub and they tag you as a star in the video, you would get residual income from that video play. Yeah, but when you make a, when you make a partnership with them, for example, uh, if someone uploads a video of you that's not from you, they can get rid of it. Oh, okay. So, you know, if you do a channel, then they'll bring more people to you. Also, they work like affiliated people where um, any people they send to my site, to my pay site, they get a percentage of it. So it's in their oh. best interest. That's where they make the big money, actually. Yeah, so, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That makes good sense. Are are you a uh, you know, obviously you can't advertise this, but are you uh -huh. a fan of the onlys? I I don't have an only fan. Uh, oh, sorry, maybe I should. Have oh no no no, we can talk freely. It's it's yeah, so I, normal I, on Twitch, anyways. I mean, everyone has one at this point, but I, yeah. I don't have one, which honestly is stupid because like it, it, it would bring me like really good money. Yeah. But I'm uh, I work with my dick, dude. I, I need to focus on one thing, one thing only. I can do like twenty things at the same time, and I feel like if I start doing like the Snapchat Premium, the only fan, the all this, it's gonna make me go to too many ways um but i'm talking to a friend of mine who has an agency and does like all the only fans for everyone and mm. yeah. oh like managing their only fans and shit yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so a, a lot of the time when uh they think they're talking to the girl they're talking to a dude behind his uh, screen and sorry i think the like the slogan of like if you were to say like the slogan of your life would it be in like if you could put it in like a, you know, like a, like an employee of the month plaque, <laughs> right? And then like your slogan would probably say like, I work with my dick. Exactly. And that's it, right? Like if you could, if yeah. you could get that tattooed on your chest. I would probably not, but yeah. Uh, yeah. It's because my, bu I, my business partner. I would probably get like, um, I work with my, uh, I work with my head. And then people would be like, I don't know which head you're talking about. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good, right? Oh, it's good. Okay. That was pretty fucking bad. Manuel. <laughs> so if you did say you did start um, one of those fan things, the mm -hmm. additional revenue, supposedly, yeah. I, from what I've heard, I mean, I, I read an article today about a uh, a woman who... It used to be on the, a million in twenty four hours. A million in twenty four hours. She used to be on the Disney Channel. Yeah, and she also directed a, a scene with Abella Danger and Seth Gamble, I think. No, no. Oh. Uh, Small Hands. Yeah, she directed for uh, another company first. Yeah. Which made a lot of noise, which was very like like a very good you know publicity. Mm -hmm. uh, and now she started her OnlyFans, and in twenty four hours, she, in twenty four hours, she beat the record uh, and got. A million. That's wild. Bella, yeah, Bella Thorne, exactly. Have you? I, mean, I don't. I, she's not in the industry, right? She's not a performer, or no, uh, not that I know of. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Exactly. Have you? She's a very pretty girl. 
have you uh have you you know what fucked have you, her have you fucked her yeah no, no. Oh, okay i don't i'm not a i don't chase after people if they call me and tell me hey uh we want you to do something like that i'll yeah. probably do it yeah uh not not i won't always do it but mm -hmm. like uh, i got offer staff in the past that i refused but in her case of course we're you would fuck her yeah in a heartbeat yeah um does does your does your wife still perform or is she just on the production side now she rarely performs and when she performs uh she wants to do it with me so which oh, is fuck. Good for me, which oh I like dude it. <laughs> wait hold on a second to you hold on wait <laughs> i gotta get this clear out of my mind you can fuck as many women as you want for work and she's just like i just want to shoot with you baby Pretty much, pretty much. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to act like, I'm not going to pretend that, you know, I'm not a swinger. I, I wouldn't handle it so as well as she does. She's more open-minded when it comes to this. I would probably not take it as well as she does. So, yeah. so, so, damn. So she's very understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she also get turned on by it. Like, for oh, example, really? like she, I, I perform in the movies she's she directs oh so she's so, just fucking loving it while you're you know yeah, yeah she, you're fucking a girl she, she writes scripts just for me and yeah and a girl and because she knows me the best and she knows it's gonna bring out the best thing out, out of the scene you know man you are a very wealthy man in more ways than one yeah i envy you slightly oh thanks man. immensely actually yeah um that's that's impressive that's fucking great you really are like living a great life man but like, i can't take any credit for things like that it's all on her you know like obviously does your wife has your wife done twitch or anything like that she appeared on my twitch here and there but she doesn't have the pet the patience for twitch yeah because i know a lot of other uh performers are are on twitch now um yeah a lot yeah. and i think you you're responsible for bringing a few on right you brought evelyn on yeah, um, uh, well, um, uh, Mia, Adriana, uh, they came to my stream. That my stream, like, like I do interviews, also like you do, but with yeah. a lot of the female performers. But I do also a lot of charity event where I bring girls, also, and uh, yeah, and I, I feel like they liked it, and now they are on it, and they're doing well with it. Do you know that I was on, uh, you know, the Austin show? Yeah, I was on there competing for adriana chechik uh-huh i came in second place and i lost to airsoft fatty no. yeah. you know who airsoft fatty is yeah yeah i yeah. lost to him well if you make adriana laugh you know you think you think there's still a shot i still got a chance of course but you need to understand like adriana is probably the most suited girl for porn like she's perfect for it she's super horny yeah she she does she doesn't do crazy things for the camera. She does crazy things because she loves doing crazy things, even in her personal life. Nice. Uh, and uh, and she goes beyond the uh, physical attribute of a man. Like she can, like 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 that's she doesn't get turned on by like a super in shape, great looking guy. Like she she like any type of man. Yeah. As long as they want to fuck she wants to fuck do you think for like a guy say just in theory like airsoft fatty mm -hmm. um who may have the opportunity to fuck adriana chechik do you think that he would have like uh it would be difficult for any like say normal dude to be able to get off a girl like adriana chechik like even well, for me or anyone else for that matter well, well here's the thing a lot of uh the guys they want to fuck a porn girl uh, girls, uh, guys are not in the industry. They want to fuck a porn girl, and the huge mistake they're gonna do is try to fuck them like they get fucked in the movies, where they do that plenty enough. Yeah, I think that most girls that are in the industry, when they have sex outside of the industry with with guys that are not from the industry, they want a more regular sex. Yeah, like romantic and sex, maybe. Either romantic or uh, you you know something where you. It doesn't look like you're doing a show. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right where you fuck for you, well, like a selfish kind of for yeah. you and for her, and not for everyone that's watching. Right. Yeah. Um, because porn is is definitely inflated in terms of like acting, right? Of course. Yeah. The the sex is real, but there are a lot of things we do in porn that you wouldn't do at home. Like you know, we have to open for the camera. We have to fuck at a certain angle so the camera can see the penetration. Yeah. Sometimes the girls say things they wouldn't say in their personal life, you know. Right. Uh, it's just like the best thing to do to a woman from the industry. If you get to fuck a porn girl, don't try to fuck them like in the movie. Don't try just, to fuck them like a porn star. Yeah. Exactly. Like, do it the way you do it. Think about giving them pleasure, taking pleasure, and that's that's the way to go, man. Do you get a lot of... Um, you must have a lot of fans. Like, there yeah. must be a lot of people that really love your work and you know um i got a few messages when i said i was doing an interview with you because in the past i, I had have... i had like mia malkova on here uh -huh. um and i had uh you know van van darkholm oh van... yeah 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 van's so cool yeah he is mia, mia is amazing like I... mia is probably one of the nicest people i've met in the adult industry really i i would have to say the same no, I, well besides you i mean you're very yeah, nice too thank you Sometimes I can be an asshole too. Okay. I'm French. I'm from Paris, you know. Okay, yeah. You could be an asshole to me. I might I might like that. That might be fun. I would yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. There's no reason for me to but, be an asshole to anyone. But you Mia know, is I'm, I'm, Yeah. Go, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. She, she's just so nice, man, and so like uh, I've never had a bad interaction with her. She was mm -hmm. always nice on set, off set. She um when the thing happened with that girl in the industry yeah. uh, that I was talking about earlier, so many girls came out and were like, dude, what the fuck? Like, Manuel wouldn't ever do something you don't like. Yeah. People know that I get turned off anytime I feel like the girl doesn't like something I do. And uh, Mia was uh, one of the girls that came out and also said, yo, Manuel's just great. I, I heard the same thing. Like, um, I heard the same thing. I heard you were like the best person to work with. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Sometimes. Depending on Sometimes. whether or not like you're having a bad day, I guess, or something. Well, like well no, no. For me, like uh, if I have a bad day, I'm never going to like, like show it on set because I know how quickly it can turn sour on set if you yeah. put your feelings, you know. Um, but again, like I, I, there's one thing I hate more than anything is uh, to waste people time. If you don't want to do porn, if you hate porn, you shouldn't be doing porn. If your only motivation is the money, just, just do something else. Yeah. Like, re really. And here and there can happen that you, you work with a girl and clearly she does not want to be there. Yeah. And when I was new in porn, I would, like, still do the scene and, you, you know. And then I realized that every time I would still do the scene, after the scene, I would feel like shit about the scene because those people they pay me a shitload of money to yeah. do a good scene and when i work with a girl that doesn't want to be there i always feel like we did a bad job that's fucking so miserable, now yeah. now I cut it short i'm like hey i always stop once i ask the girl hey you okay because you yeah. feel very distant and if the girl doesn't change i cut and i'm like listen you don't want to be here i'm gonna do you a favor we're all going home oh so, fuck on my production, it costs me money because I have to give kill fees to everyone. Yeah. But I'd rather lose a little bit of money than spend all that money and shoot a scene that I'm never going to release. Because I have like a box full of scenes that I shot years ago that I've never released because I wasn't happy with them. Do you ever, so, like, do you fuck them yeah. before you shoot so you know whether or not you'll shoot a good scene? No, no, no. no. So it's like, it's like Russian roulette almost. It's Russian roulette. Um, but, you, you know, like, I'm friends with a bunch of, like, the directors. So, yeah. like, let's say a friend of mine shoots a girl. He's going to call me. Hey, dude, I shot that girl today. She was fucking incredible. Then yeah. if I shoot a girl, I'm going to call my friends and be like, this girl is great. Uh, you, you know, or sometimes I'm just going to put it on Twitter where I'm going to be like, hey, if you're a director in this industry, this girl's incredible. You should shoot her. You know? Wow. That's yeah. that's quite the endorsement coming from someone like you, too. Yeah. The um, So, speaking about the money. There's a huge wage gap, right, between male talent and female talent. Mm, so it used to be more like it, uh, but now the 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 gap is closing, 
And it's still an industry where the majority of women make better money than the majority of men. Yeah. Except few guys. There are guys that make as much and sometimes more money uh, uh, than the girls. But yeah. uh, we can't forget that they're the real stars in the industry. Like, we're the shoe shine. We're here to make the girls shine yeah. better sometimes than others. But really, the real, real stars in the industry are the, the women. And, uh, you know, you just have to see on OnlyFans how much women make compared to men oh my yeah. god yeah i mean especially you know even girls from twitch that go and start only fans like oh yeah these girls are fucking killing it man you know yeah oh and it's, yeah it's good, it's good unbelievable oh it's awesome yeah i mean yeah. like they go from you know having like 500 subscribers on twitch to starting an only fans and having 500 subscribers on only fans but making 15 20 30 thousand dollars a month oh yeah and yeah, so yeah. Some are even making upwards of a hundred thousand dollars a month. Oh, oh, easily, easily, you, easily. Uh, you know, I I like uh, like a lot of people. They come to me and they're like, "Yeah, isn't OnlyFans bad for porn?" No, I I think it's great for mul multiple reasons. Okay, uh, first of all, not everyone is as busy as me as yeah. a man, yep. or some women like uh, like me. I was or Adriana is always busy. You know. Yeah. There are, there are male performers and female performers that don't work as much. They're going to work maybe like four, five, six times a month. And they make decent mm. money, but it's not the best money. Now with OnlyFans, the days they have off, they can take work with each other, yeah. so not spend any <clears throat> money, and still bring money in. Yeah. The other, the other thing I like with OnlyFans is like now it's easier – for the people to retire from porn because you can oh, retire yeah. from porn mm -hmm. and before when you retire from porn hey man you, you gotta go back to the real world <clears throat> yep and you have to find a regular job where people might recognize you and give yep. you shit about it <clears throat> now you can have a smoother transition towards uh uh getting out of porn and now and that's what the best about this is it gives so much power to the performer, so much yeah. empowerment. Now, you don't have to do this amount of scenes every month. You can say no and still make a good living, you, you know. And that's what's most important because that's how you get burned out in the industry when you work all the time, all the time. And sometimes you work for companies that you're like, eh, I shouldn't work for these people, yeah. but they pay my rate, so I'm going to do it, you know. And that that's great. That's that's the great thing about OnlyFan, and it's good. Yeah, I, it I, cuts, I think it cuts great. the middleman. Sorry, it cuts the middleman too. You know. Yeah, that's that's huge because well, you, yeah, because I mean, and then people are shooting like amateur content for OnlyFans as well. Yeah. So and it's most, like, most of it is amateur content. Yeah, and it's like low production value, like like little to no editing, things like that. Yeah, it's funny because I have a series called Raw, mm -hmm. and that's. <clears throat> I swear, like to me, that's the origin of, of OnlyFans. Like I do this for like 15 years, that same series. Yeah. And um, mm. it's like a girl, me in a hotel room fucking where sometimes I'm hold the camera POV. Sometimes I put it down and it films towards us where yeah. it bring it cuts all the cliche of porn, like the opening for the camera, the, all, all the shit. So it's only like fucking for you. Yeah. And putting a camera that gives that like voyeuristic style amateur amateurish you know yeah and people people love it people love that style so now only fan for that is so uh amazing because it gives you a window into like real sex life and non-mainstream porn life which some people get tired of sometimes yeah do you think that mainstream porn and kind of like the depth of categories at least to this point because obviously people have their own like um, niches and what they like more than anything mm -hmm. now um, have has kind of ruined like the allure of sex to people that aren't like super familiar like uh, say let me give you an example before I before I let you speak but um, say uh, nowadays people go on the internet and they type in uh, a BDSM sexuality test right uh -huh. and it's say a girl 26 year old girl who just you know had a few one night stands or whatever has a boyfriend or whatever does a BDSM test and she finds out that she's like a, a rope bunny, 
Okay. Okay. And she watches rope bunny porn on the hub and she convinces herself that she likes being tied up or whatever. Do you think that that has like the, the crazy, uh, not the craziness, but the, like the, the differences in like the erotic erotica like the different erotic categories on the hub and such have kind of like i wouldn't say like ruined but like set like a high expectation for sex with their with like normal part like partners that aren't in the industry and such well i just think people need to take porn for what it is and it's only uh entertainment it's yeah. not it's not <clears throat> educational it's not we're not saying hey this is how you should like it and how you should do it and if you uh if you take it like that yeah uh you might not have the best best experience you can be like you know hey when i watch this it turns me on so maybe i should try it that's right. fine but you know it's still professionals mm -hmm. doing a job and not just like going you know freely yeah. and and not necessarily always loving what they're doing you and know? it's it's interesting right because there is a point where like I was on like dating apps, right? And I'd go on a dating app and I'd, I'd swipe on a girl and then I'd read her bio and say like, I like being dominated. And then you're like, okay. So then you talk or whatever and say you get to the point where you're going to fuck them. And then they're like, I'm a sub, right? Mm -hmm. The next thing you end up finding out is that they have no fucking clue what they're talking about. <laughs> they're like, oh, well, I did an online personality test to see what kind of sex I like. And like, that's what I feel like... A, my personal experience with it is that a lot of people are like trying to identify themselves within like these sexual like categories in a sense like you know i i like milf porn that was always my thing uh -huh. you know what i mean so like yeah. i was always like well i'm gonna go fucking milf and i did and it was awful it was fucking oh, horrible really oh it was terrible it was like fucking a leather bag man it was terrible oh no yeah oh yeah it was really bad but i i committed what? to it well, a lot of people, when they think about MILF, they think about like Brandy Love or like girls like that, you know, yeah. like the porn MILF, you know, it's not always like that. <laughs> well, because, you know, I, I, like I said, I went on set one time uh, uh -huh. and it was when I was with Evelyn and okay. it was <sighs> Reagan Fox. Yeah. And I was like, she was like, she, she said hi to me and I was like, oh my God, I used to masturbate to you all the time. And she was like, oh, thanks. That's so sweet of you. And I was like. Very uncomfortable because the I think his name was Seth something. Seth uh, Gamble. Seth Gamble was walking around butt naked, and <laughs> and he was just so casual, right? Yeah. And yeah. I was like, just he we were having like a nice conversation, and he was talking to me, but I was looking at his dick the whole time. It didn't even bother the guy. So like, yeah, I was like, man, you adult performers are so comfortable, and like you kind of have to be in a way, right? So. I see, like, it's funny because, like, before being in porn, I was uh, always, like, shy with nudity. And to this day, I, I still am. Although the moment, the moment the director says action, I have tunnel vision and all I see is the person I'm working with. Yeah. And I forget everything that, like, all my surrounding doesn't exist to me once the director says action. But the moment I'm done, I'm going to quickly grab a towel yeah. or put pants on. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Go and get the fuck out of there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To this day, I'm still, you, you know, to this day, I'm still like, I wouldn't say not comfortable with nudity, but I don't also don't want to, I respect the people on set where I don't, they don't necessarily want me to go around butt naked all day, you know, yeah. or, you know, you finish the scene and you go eat chips and you put your hand in the only bag on set where <laughs> no one, you know, it happened in the past where someone like, like a lighting guy like flipped on a dude because the guy just finished fucking and the first thing he did was like put his hands in the chip, oh, in the bag fucker. of chips. And the director, and the light guy was like, dude, this is your bag of chips now. Don't put it back there. Yeah. <laughs> no one wants to touch you it. got all your fucking juices all over the place. Right, yeah. Exactly. Sorry, let me grab a. <clears throat> um <laughs> we're all different you know i feel like maybe seth was already very comfortable with being yeah. naked before porn you know yeah there was uh it was really interesting I, I i'm gonna share a story with you of like a personal experience of what i uh of what i i, I spoke to one of the audio guys he was like the micro he was like the microphone guy the boom arm guy mm -hmm. you know what i mean he would like hold the he would hold the microphone he did ca catch all the squishes and splashes and noises and things like that 
Uh-huh. And uh, he told me this story about how he was going through a divorce. You know what the thing is? You probably actually know who this guy is, I would think. Um, I don't know what his name is. Uh, even if I did, I wouldn't say it. But he, uh, he was telling me how his wife and him are going through a divorce. And he was explaining to me um, how their marriage is like failing. They got married. They're, she's in the industry. She's a performer and he's audio. And, or video, audio or video, one of the two. And he was telling me about how uh, their marriage like failed and you know how, how the industry um, kind of like ruined their marriage even though they both met each other while they were in the industry. Mm. And he was talking about how his wife has shot porn with like his mom who's in the industry his dad who's in the industry and his brother who's in the industry as well so he has an entire porn family wait what i don't yes. know who that is you don't know who it is no he's he's in he's in los angeles i don't know i'll, I'll send i have i follow him on twitter i'll send it okay. to you I yeah don't, i don't know any sound guy that have the whole family in porn. the whole the family porn. yeah wait, the mom the dad and who else? And the brother. I have no clue. That. Yeah. And they're, wait, the parents are performers or what do they do? Performers, yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, you, you know me as brother as in the industry. Yeah. 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 So it's not, it's not, it's not me, obviously. But, um, yeah. but he said, I was like, well, don't you think that's kind of, that might be, I was, I just met him. We were just talking and he was like, uh, this is on scene with like Seth and, and all of them. And he was like, uh, uh, no, I don't think it had anything to do with my marriage failing. And I was like, mm. uh, in my head, like, yeah. first, of, first of all, you just met the guy and he, he's already talking to you about this failed marriage and like, bro, that dude needed to talk. That he dude. needed to talk. Yeah. He needed to talk big time. Because, That's what I mean. Man, like, like, Hey. I don't know if I would go like tell this story to the first guy, like you know, or maybe the fact that you're not in the industry made it easier for him to like talk to someone. That's uh, maybe because you know. I'm 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 pretty rational, and like my girlfriend at the time was in the industry, and I wasn't, and I was there, and I was like, you know, it was whatever. How did you live this? How did you uh, handle being in a relationship with a uh, with Evelyn? Uh, While she was performing, she was still performing when you guys were out together. Yeah, yeah, she didn't do many scenes actually. She, um, so I lived in New York at the time, and she was in L.A. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I think I, I would go to L.A. probably like once a month and mm -hmm. visit her for a few weeks, and then uh, we'd I'd go back to New York and we'd miss each other, or whatever, and then we'd get back together and see each other. But it was like I think it was like less than five months. It wasn't that long. Um, but we, uh, we had a really toxic breakup, like really bad. Oh, um, sorry, dude. no, 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 I no. Remember, I remember meeting you, uh, at TwitchCon. Diego, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We met each other at TwitchCon and then, uh, she actually came out to Texas. Um, cause I live in Austin, but I'm, I'm in New York right now. I went back to New York cause Texas is a shit show with COVID. Um, yeah. and, uh, she came out to Texas and it was a great, it was a great visit. We, uh, we caught up, like made up and everything like that. Like no hard feelings or anything like that. But, um, oh, good. it was good. really hard for me, I guess. Cause I, I had never dated anyone that was in the industry, but I really liked her for who she was. So I, um, I, I knew what she did in the industry and I had to accept what she was doing in the industry. Although it would make me feel uncomfortable at points. I had to like, just suck it up, I guess. And sometimes uh -huh. when I'd be insecure, I'd like express that and be like, Oh, I'm fucking, you know, all oh, this bothers me or something like that, you know? Um, but I guess it kind of, it kind of comes with like the nature of the beast, right? Of but, course. Yeah. And she did everything she could to like make me feel comfortable in the relationship as well. So she did a really good job as to like trying to make me feel comfortable. But, uh, good. yeah, it was, it was really hard though. I'm sure dude. Like, I mean, like I was telling you earlier, like, I, I don't think I could handle it the other way. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I would ever do it again. Um, you know? I, I don't think I would ever date another performer. Um, a, a friend of mine, like, that's how I met him, actually, is, like, he idolized the girl in the industry and did everything to meet her and ended, ended up in a relationship. So, like, his biggest fantasy became reality. Yeah. And the reality became a nightmare for him. Ah, see? Okay. 
so sometimes you know fantasies are not always meant and most of the time not meant to uh happen to happen yeah and um yeah i mean it's just like you know i mean i think to some extent everyone is insecure right i mean of course m more now so than ever like everyone's doing like open relationships and they're very explorative and things like that but at some point it just has to be like you know i i don't know i i'd rather just be the only person you know put yeah. my wiener inside of you how old is evelyn now uh shit i don't know 20 probably 24 25 she's young yeah she's young she's yeah young. So she's and she's growing right she's she was very uh she was doing really well when we were dating yeah, yeah. Uh, and you uh, and you worked with her before uh, yeah 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 but, and she she said nothing but great things about you yeah she's sam she's nice the first time i met her was actually on set for uh, uh my wife's movie mm -hmm. and uh yeah great girl very pretty um Great girl. Wait, hold on. I mean, I'm going to mute the stream for one second so they can't hear this. One second. On. It's just going to be me and you talking. Experience together then. Yeah. Um, We're Eskimo brothers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are Eskimo brothers. Wait, can we give each other a high five? That's cool. Okay. <clears throat> so I was talking about like the, the wage gap. You said it's getting better now. Mm. Um, I was always curious about that because well, I remember hearing that like women were at like uh, the here, range is like, go ahead, go ahead. Here's what happened. Like, being a male performer is not as easy as people think it is. Yeah. So, being a male performer, uh, there was a time where I feel like that's when male performers should have made more money, where the ratio of male performer for female performer was so low, mm -hmm. right? Like, there was probably one male performer for, like, 50 girls in the industry yeah and i'm talking about like good male performer yeah not anyone that's just you know does okay and uh now the industry and the male performers has changed a lot see when i started there wasn't any viagra or fucking cialis or whatever injection some of those guys are using now mm -hmm. uh so either you were good or you were not a male porn star. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now it's a lot different where anyone can be a male porn star, mm -hmm. honestly, because there are things that some of those guys use that, trust me, no 20 year old man should ever use. To make, your, to make your dick harder and stuff like that? Yeah, exactly. But the, the thing is, a lot of those guys now, they are a lot more male performers doesn't make them good. Like yeah. the ba the basic thing to be a male performer is to have an erection on camera, right? Which, <laughs> Pretty hard. That's the, that's the basic. But nowadays, with the thing that those guys can use, it's not that hard anymore. Yeah. Okay. To have an okay. But a lot of them still can do the job because they don't understand that having a hard dick doesn't make you good. Yeah. It makes you reliable, but not good. You know? Yeah, I mean, like, you can have a hard dick, but you can suck at fucking. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and even more, like, for example, I don't use any pill or anything. Mm -hmm. So for me to stay hard, I need to do the things that are going to turn me on. I yeah. need to do all those things. I need to, to make the girl come because that's what's going to make my head work and gotcha. keep my dick hard. Yeah. Because those guys use this time of pro this type of product, they don't need all that, so they're not gonna go trying to get that, you mm -hmm. know. Like, like for me, when I watch porn, and that's why I only watch amateur porn. Uh -huh. But when I watch porn and I see a guy that fucks with his hand behind his back, or like where clearly the guy has no <clears throat> personality, there's yeah. nothing. Like you could put a dildo and put it against a wall it, yeah. it would be as good as that dude right <laughs> and guys like that there are so many right now in our industry yeah. guys are just fucking dildos they're just dildos you know? with meat yeah so but the good thing about all these guys is because they suck so bad the few guys are actually good at it they get paid well they get paid well because yeah. they are in high demand so when did you, like, when you were in porn, 
like when you first started, did you realize on your first set that you were like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to fuck women and get paid for it. No. When, um, so I actually started porn on a dare. Really? Yeah. My best friend dared me to do it. And back in the days I was in college, uh, to become a PE teacher. Yeah. I had three years left and I, um, I was like, Oh really? You're daring me. All right. Yeah. I did not believe I could do it. I didn't think I could actually be good at it. Yeah. But, but it's, it's one of those things that to know if you can do it, there is only one way to know is to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I've heard so many guys, I've seen so many guys tell me like, oh, I could do this, no problem, blah, blah. And then when they get a chance to do it, they completely tank. What, what would you say like your favorite, who's, the, who's your favorite person you've worked with besides your wonderful wife who supports you immensely? Well, it's, it's uh, to me, like 23 years of porn. That's a lot of sex, man. Yeah, it's impossible to pick one. I've met so many amazing girls. Yeah. So many girls that were so into it. There is always the, <clears throat> the girl of the moment. Like, yeah, right now there are girls like Adriana Chechik or like, like Abella Danger, Angela yeah. White. And there are so many girls. Like, even I should have said those three names because, like, it doesn't give justice to all the other ones. All the other like, girls, yeah so good and they have fun they do a good job they're professional that you you know so many of them more than girls that i wouldn't work with again you know like mm. uh because that's one of the things like i'm always going to work with a girl once and if if it was not good i would i won't do it again yeah but like this is a weird question this is a wild question if you were okay <clears throat> what's your body count no idea i never Jesus. counted you never counted I'm never counted like and even before porn I, I had like i was working i was working i was fucking a lot of girls you were yeah porn. yeah my my friends when i was younger they used to call me rocco for rocco cifredi who's a <laughs> huge italian you know the italian, italian stallion yeah the italian stallion my friends used to call me rocco because i would fuck girls all the time all really? the time all the time yeah Damn. so that's why my friend dared me because he was like bro you you need to try you should do it <laughs> back then i was in college i was like yeah i don't know to be a PE teacher i was like yeah that's probably gonna ruin my career and because i was an idiot and mm -hmm. i just wanted to fuck a bunch of girls i tried damn, damn. and to think who would have thought you could make a living off of having sex huh who would have Bro. thought? So my, my wife and I, we used to do a little um, YouTube. We, we had a YouTube channel called Porn Soup. If you've never checked it out, I'll send you a link. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there were little <clears throat> skits around porn, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the skits we did was uh, like we stopped talking and I'm like, can you believe that we bought this house with the sweat of my balls? <laughs> <laughs> and and then it's a succession of things that I point at. Yeah, yeah, sweat of my balls, the sweat of my balls. I bought this with the sweat of my balls. Like, yeah. It's a bunch of shit, like the car, the sweat of my balls. Like yeah. even like stupid shit, like we have a lab, we have a white lab. I'm like, see that Labrador? Bought it with the sweat of my balls, like, you know. <laughs> I love that. I, I can't think of one thing I've bought with the sweat of my balls besides yeah, my ex-wife, right. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You, get a, uh, you can start an OnlyFans and then you can say that too. Do you think anyone and anyone can start an OnlyFans? Yes. Yeah? It always makes me laugh right now because, like, I see so many girls, hey, I'm, a dis I'm in the zero point something percentage of a. I feel like all of these girls are, like, in the zero point something percent. I know. Yeah, okay. Do you think it's, like, an act of, like, it's deceptive? Like, because uh, who owns. Um, OnlyFans, MindGeek is it MindGeek? Uh, no, it's MFC. Uh, MFC, my free cam. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. And then they're who, are they owned by MindGeek? No, no, because MindGeek, if a lot of people don't know, they're like the they're like the f monopoly. Pretty yes, without saying, no, without like, saying like, that, yeah. you know, like the browsers, the P Hub, the Digital Playground, yeah. the Reality Kings. 
it's all it's all man geek owned yeah yeah they they're like the uh god they're like the ten son of porn yeah yeah i actually uh i'm actually contracted now with them as a person oh shit really yeah whoa manuel you I, uh, you have entered the billion dollar zone that's what you've entered well uh, honestly like i played this very well uh like i refused to work for them for over 10 years because originally uh they had uh they had the p hub and and originally i was completely against it for the yeah. reason i told you in the beginning because they mm -hmm. were just stealing content from people yeah and making money off of it and so i refused for years and they they would always contact me. Hey, can we talk? Can we talk? And last year we ended up talking on a. It's funny because like, a girl started directing movies and she asked me if I would work for her, mm -hmm. and I said yeah, no problem. But I didn't know who she was directing for. Mm -hmm. So then she went to tell them, yeah, Manuel says he's gonna work for me. So <laughs> then they were like, oh wait, he always says no to us. Why? Why did he say yes to you? And then they contacted me. Yeah. And we had a discussion on how they changes their business, how P Hub worked. I like the changes. And then we talked and they're like, what would you want to work with us? And I told them and they agreed on everything I asked for. Really? And we made the deal. Yeah. Have you? And, and, and I'm going to say that, honestly, uh, it's a year now that I made the deal with them and they've been nothing but respectful they've never changed anything on me yeah no bad surprises <clears throat> like everything i asked and they say yes to they respected everything about it so good wow. people <clears throat> yeah that's surprising especially like do you think you had a lot to do with like the reform of that and like how they approach like no uh, no, no. no 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 they don't give a fuck about <laughs> You know, yeah. they're like, they make way too much money to, you know, also everyone knows that if it's not you, it's going to be someone else. Yep. Like there was a male performer, <laughs> there was a male performer years ago, very well known in the industry. And he came to me, he's like, I figured out how to fight them. I'm like, all right. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, uh, we're going to get a hacker that's going to put a bunch of viruses into the, I'm like, man, get the fuck out of here with that shit. I'm like, shut the fuck up. And I told him, I'm like, bro, you want to hurt them? Stop working for them. Yeah, exactly. And he was like, whoa, you, but they but give the me money. this. But, uh, exactly. I'm like, so shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. you're trying to fight against something that you don't want to stop. That You, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, this is the dumbest shit ever. I'm like, please <laughs> shut up. What is, yeah. uh, what, if, have you spoken much about this contract or this new deal publicly yet or? Yeah, well, it's a year old now, so yeah, yeah people know about it. I've, uh, you know, um, it's good. Uh, one of the main reason why I accepted too is because uh, they had they had few girls on their contract that I really wanted to have sex with. Yeah, and my only way to get to fuck them was to uh, <laughs> to sign a deal with them. So, did you take a pay cut because of that? Because <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't take pay cuts, man. I, I Damn. I'm I'm not gonna have a multi-million dollar, maybe billion dollar company. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna give them any money cut on this. No, that's impossible. I don't I don't anyway give anyone cuts because that's not like I would never ask someone to give me a better rate. If I yeah. want someone in my movie, whatever the rate is, is the rate I will pay. If the rate, if I don't like the rate, then that's I, it. You don't I'm work not, with them. I, I just don't work with them. But you know, I'm don't ask people to give me a better deal like we're friends or can i can i ask because i'm really curious but like if you say you you have a production company are they all full-time employees or con uh, contract or no yeah they, they are paid per scene like each scene they get paid and so on average if they just and you can ballpark these because you don't have to be specific about numbers but what is like the average cost of like uh, talent production shooting and distribution of like well that's the beauty of porn it's that nowadays it can go from zero mm -hmm. to thousands of dollars i mean if you do only fan you're producing porn if you have a friend like she wants to do a scene you yeah. do a scene together and 
you do it at her house or you get a hotel room. So that's going to be minimum cost. She does yep. her own makeup. So it's going to be really minimum costs, right? Versus, uh, for example, my wife right now, she's shooting like a big feature mm-hmm. with like, like top, top, top talents in it with huge, uh, like they rented like a huge uh, penthouse downtown LA, like probably, like it's so funny because like the 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 penthouse they rented downtown, it's like you see it in every TV shows oh, in Los Angeles, fuck. you know. And they rented that for a month, you know. Uh, so that's that's a huge production, and that costs like thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah, and then and then in terms of like revenue, like yeah. is is that like that's what I'm curious about. Like, say if a video because of distribution and with like online stuff, like. Because we know that, like, the porn industry makes a shit ton of money, right? Mm-hmm. But we don't know, like, how much, like, say, a video might make in the industry. Like, do you know, do you have any idea, like, and you don't have to speak, like, specifically or anything like that, but, like... It, 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 it used to be simpler to know exactly. I mean, you can easily know. <clears throat> but, like, back in the DVDs, like... It was the main thing. Like yeah. maybe you would sell to a hotel here and there, but the or to a TV channel here and there or in Europe. But the DVDs were the main thing. Now there are so many platforms you can make money off. So you might not make as much as you used to make on DVDs, but you're gonna take a little bit by selling DVDs. Uh, you have your website. Yeah. You have an OnlyFans. You put stuff on P Hub. You so a little here, a little here, a little here, a little here, and it still make really good money. Now, depending on who you have, depending on the popularity, depending on how well you are at marketing your stuff, you know, it's it's like any other business. You know, we sell porn, but you could sell like clothes the same way. You yeah. could sell, you, you know. Wow. I was just always curious because I've, I, I mean, obviously, like it's a billion dollar industry and like companies like Mind, Mind Geek are making mm-hmm. tons of money, like tons uh, of money. Well. And, uh, you know, each one of those videos, depending on like the quality and obviously the performers and such must be quite a bit of fucking money. And then people are pirating the content too, right? So that's a thing. Yeah, that's yeah. That's another thing with uh, OnlyFans now, like like those girls that, used to work with all those companies not caring now they have guys that steal their content from only fan and put it for free on the platforms and now they're complaining yeah yeah you know? wait but so back in the days they were not complaining now they're complaining of course. manuel do you consider yourself a sex worker uh well i work in uh by having sex with people so yeah <laughs> the do you think that term is like derogatory or like no. kind of ugly um, well, it might not be the like prettiest term, but like at the same time, like it's it has its quality by saying exactly what I do. Yeah, you yeah. know. And do you think that that term or definition applies to like say uh, people who do OnlyFans as well, that they're sex workers as well? Uh, uh some degree, yeah. I mean, if you uh, if you show your ass. Uh, on on uh, only fan, yeah. I mean, like, what do you think the guys are watching you do with that? Yeah. Like, do you think they take posters and put them in their bedrooms? No, they, can, <laughs> they jerk they jerk off to that. But at the same time, yes and no. I mean, do you think uh, being a woman on the just chatting section of Twitch is a uh, sex work? I guess it depends on. Some a few of different the dudes factors, are, you know, some of the dudes that are yeah. watching that they jerk off to it now. Uh, yeah, you're right. I, I don't even see it as a bad thing. I mean, even if it is, like, yeah, I own the fact that you know, I work in porn. Our Instagram models, sex workers, like, you know. Oh, oh, you bring up a really good point. Like, I mean, who isn't a sex worker at this point? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I mean. Bro, I'm sure there are guys jerking off to video games, you know, so are you making porn? Do you know, Manuel, that the first week that I came on Twitch, someone sent me a picture of their hard cock 
up against their uh, a local university that was near where I lived. They were wearing a t-shirt of the local university and they had their hard cock in the photo and they said, welcome to Twitch. Okay. Pretty weird, right? But let me tell you about the second most interesting thing. Someone sent me a cum tribute of my face. Someone jerked off on my face and sent me a video of it. That's the stash, bro. You think so? That's the stash. Yeah. You think so, huh? It's the prom stash, man. You think so? <laughs> How's it look? Do you think it's comparable? or? It would have been very successful in the 70s in porn. Oh, oh, that's kind of rude. Should I get rid of it? <laughs> Should I get no, rid of it? No, I mean, like, that's when they used to have porn stash. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right, yeah. You know, uh, John Holmes and all those guys. Hey, so what's up with all the anime, man? I'm a giant weeb. I'm really? Like the, I'm like the biggest weeb you... I mean, look at my background. It's a little dark, but... Yeah. I mean... My background is, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge weeb. And uh, now, like, what makes me the happiest in my life is knowing that my kids uh, share this passion with Aww, me. Aw, man. You are such a great father, Manuel. No, but it's great. Like, oh. I, I, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really something that I love and I waited for. Because, you know, when they're tiny babies, when they're yeah. tiny kids, they're mostly, like, mommy's boys, or, you know. Yeah. And now... We share like so much. We do sports together. We play video games. We watch anime. I take them anytime there is like an anime movie release in theater. I take them, you know, uh, we go together. We do anime expo. Like we, uh, the last Japan expo in LA, mm -hmm. anime expo, uh, we all went where one of my son was Naruto and my other sons and me were Akatsuki's for people who know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, look at my room. Look at my shirt. shirt. Look at my shorts. I don't know if you guys know anime, but like, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm a huge weeb. I, I, the difference between me and the other weebs is I have a giant cock. But... <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Manuel Ferreira. Uh, all y'all motherfuckers on Twitch who think you are cooler than him, see you later, you fucking losers. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Damn. <laughs> you really know how to shut them up, huh? Holy shit. Are you a good... No. Sh do you play a lot of online games where you can, like, shit talk to people? Uh, I play a lot of online games. I shit talk a lot, but for no reason, because I suck. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an old dude playing video games, man. Like, like mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when I was young, I was a beast at FIFA. I was a beast at, like, any shooters. I was... And then... I started really traveling a lot, working a lot. So I, did, I, I always played video game, but not as competitive as I used to. Yeah. And then when I started Twitch, I started playing with guys that are like world champion. Like mm -hmm. a friend of mine, his name is Bruce Granek. He was four time world champion at FIFA. I played Damn. with him. I quit FIFA after playing with him. <laughs> he because fucked you like, up. Bro, like, it, it wasn't even, like he wasn't even playing hard and he was like destroying me. Like yeah. Street Fighter. I, I, I was a huge Street Fighter player. Did I play with a dude? Same thing. The guy was a professional player. Like, I, and when I, I love, like, right now I play a lot of Warzone. Oh, cool. Yeah, I play and, that too. And I love it. And I have my days where I feel like I'm doing good, but really I'm just doing okay. Have you played Warzone with, uh, you know, Will Neff? No. Oh, you, no. I, I got to play I gotta yeah. introduce oh, we know to each him. Other. Oh, you we do? know each other. Yeah, yeah, we know each other. We met at uh, TwitchCon, mm. and uh, yeah, we we talk here and there. Yeah, yeah he's. I, like, I play Warzone cool. with him, um, and Margot Brook. Do you know Margot Brook? I don't think so. No, I'll have to introduce you to them. But we could all play it together sometime. Yeah, uh, let's do it. But we're bad. I'm bad at it. Margot's fucking awesome at. It. She's awesome at it. Awesome. Yeah. So you've been playing a lot. Do you play any like MMORPGs or anything like that? I'm not an MMORPG guy. Yeah. No. Like, uh, like WoW. WoW is an MMORPG, right? Yeah, World of Warcraft, yeah. Yeah. I always have one joke about like World of Warcraft. I, I always tell people I had the choice between playing WoW and having a sex life, and I chose having a sex life. It's too time-consuming to me, uh, WoW. I... <clears throat> That's cool. But, my style says I chose WoW. <laughs> That's cool. I, uh, I I play World of Warcraft, and I still have a sex life. Good, good. 
it's only a joke, you know, it's only a joke. <laughs> I, I have the same joke with Animal Crossing, you know, when people talk to me about Animal Crossing, I always say that, yeah, I have a sex life, I can't play that game. <laughs> Wait, did you ever play, like, Diablo, Diablo 2 or anything like that? Dude, I'm so old, I used to play Diablo 1. My man, I fucking love Diablo 1, though. It was a great yeah. game. It was fun, yeah. And what, you played fun. Warcraft 1 too, as well? No, I never played the uh, Really? Yeah. No, 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 not World of Warcraft. The first Warcraft. Oh, oh the first Warcraft, no. I didn't uh, play it. Man, well, it's, it's like, I don't know why, but that's one of my favorite games. I used to, I'm 30, but I used to, like, bring the uh, instruction manuals to school, and I'd, like, mm -hmm. read them, and I was, like, six, seven years old. I don't know, eight years old or something like that. I used to draw, like, I tr used to try to, like, draw the the characters and shit like that. I'm a, I'm a yeah. Diablo, like, Warcraft guy. I've always been like that. See, the thing is, I was always more of a console player mm -hmm. than, a, than a PC player. It's really for the last four years since I started streaming that I play more PC games than, yeah. than you know. How, how was your welcoming on Twitch? Uh, very interesting. Like, very successful. And, but Twitch was keeping an eye on me because okay. I was really like one of the first from my industry because I wasn't the first one. There was a couple girls that from my industry that started on Twitch, but they were not like that popular. Mm -hmm. And also they quickly did something stupid and got banned. Uh, but then because of it, I know that Twitch kept an eye on me in the very big, very beginning. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And uh, then they quickly realized I was like really into gaming, really serious about Twitch. Yeah. Um, I met at uh, TwitchCon uh, two years ago. I met uh, one of the creators of Twitch. I don't, I never remember oh. the name. Terrible. And the guy, I didn't know who he was. And the guy actually came to talk to me and introduced himself. Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Hey, man, I just want to tell you how happy you are that uh, uh, how happy I am that you are on our platform. Uh, your content is cool. We like what you do. We like the way you talk about your industry. Because yeah. I'm not trying. You know, when I'm on Twitch, I'm not trying to get more. Uh, it's not my way to bring people to my porn. If <clears> anything, <throat> like the people, they start having a real amical, like like friendly relationship." with me yeah so watching me now becomes weird so if anything it makes me lose viewership yeah yeah but but it's okay because you know like i i get something out of twitch that i don't get out of porn so. i think it's i so i started twitch it's probably been about a year now um it's probably been about a year i've been doing it i've been trying to do it for full time for about like seven eight months now because <clears throat> the income's very obvious it's like very different right Definitely. um but uh it's been it's been probably one of the my favorite things that i've done and i've worked in like i worked in new york nightlife for a while um and i used to like work in clubs like uh, pretty fun clubs and shit like that and uh i used to do like marketing and advertising and shit like that and this has been like the most fun i've had do you kind of feel like that do you you obviously don't enjoy twitch more than porn no. but i mean i mean i mean it's very different but i enjoy like you, you know L like i said in the very beginning i can only do things that i like or love doing i only get motivated i'm lazy as fuck yeah. unless it's to do something i love doing yeah that's what's gonna make me wake up early that's what's gonna make me move my ass like uh, uh, you know and twitch is one of those things like yeah. i love doing it and i really get something it's a, it's a little bit of a therapy for me you know have you ever um I don't know if you ever did an interview. There's a there's a guy on YouTube named Chasm G. You ever heard of him before? No. Yeah, I gotta send him send you him. He does a he does a series called uh Getting or Going Deep. Okay. And it's perfect. It's fucking hilarious, man. It's like he only he's worked he's brought like other uh adult entertainers on before and I gotta send him to you. You'll probably get a fucking laugh out of him. I, I'm trying to get him on this show because he's just so fucking funny. Um cool yeah i think i think you'd actually really enjoy his content he's fucking hilarious um <clears throat> how do you feel about uh how do you feel about the current state of like twitch and just chatting like because you, you literally just said like are, are you know are women uh are women streamers considered sex workers because they're just i have um i have a total different point of view that my friend train on this okay i just i'm part of the people that think that if you don't like it don't watch it yeah i'm with you on that i'm not 
I'm not going to hate on other people's hustle if that's their way to hustle. Yeah. You know, like, for example, a girl like Amaranth, right? Which I didn't know before Twitch and before even talking to Train. Yeah. Like, I only found out about Amaranth when, when uh, I met Train. <clears throat> so I started checking what she does. Uh, I'm definitely not her demographic. Yeah. You know, I'm not, uh, her stream is not for me, but I respect the work she does, man. She puts a lot of work on her Twitch. She mm -hmm. puts a lot of hours in her Twitch. And even if the content is not what I like, clearly there are a lot of people that like it yeah. and go, and she's very successful. And that I like that. I like to see young people successful. And even if they're not young, but like, it makes me happy to see young, successful people. Yeah that I like their content or not. It's like with music. Do I like, like, I'm, I like rap. Do I like every rapper? No, but it makes me happy to see those guys successful or anyone that's successful. Cause we know that at the end, it's a lot of work you have to put in yeah. to be successful. <clears throat> True. A girl like a girl like Amaranth, when you see how, how many hours and how much uh, she Extra puts content. in her content. Yeah. Uh, you have to respect that. And I, I don't know if she does OnlyFans and all those things, but if she does, she deserves that money, man. She yeah. works hard. With... Yeah, I, I actually agree. I 100% I, I, I agree with you. Having dated two people that have been uh, in the, the industry, I guess, in a way, um, and like ha are both on Twitch or have been on Twitch, I, I think I totally agree. I mean, like, why not? The, the thing that I, I came to realize... Uh, after having a conversation with with someone, a, a, a woman that uh, I forgot who she was, she said, uh, "If I'm going to be sexualized, I might as well just make money off of it." Yeah, well, um, Jenna, remember Jenna? Jenna. Oh, Jenna. Je oh, yeah, Jenna. Yeah. So one time I was talking to her, and she was telling me that in the beginning she was very careful with what she was wearing. Yeah. And she realized that no matter what she wears, there are guys that are, com that are coming on her chat and insulting her and talking shit to her because, you know, yeah, because she's a woman. Yeah. And she was like, you know what? Since they're going to do it anyway, I might as well wear what I like to wear, even if it's sometimes a little sexy. And, and she's right, man. Like, like, I agree. You got to do what makes you happy the way that it makes you happy. Yeah. You know, that's the only way to be to have a healthy mind, you know? Yeah, I agree. Do you meditate or do yoga or anything cool like that? No, I feel like my, my way to do this is by doing sports also that I like. Like when uh, when I play tennis or basketball this morning. Yeah. This morning I did like a, like a, like workout, like, like a activity, like with different things. And, and that's what makes me like, happy and keeps me down to earth and you know keeps me mellow i like that yeah i uh i i do like meditation do like mindful meditation that's cool yeah i mean that's what i do yeah my my wife does that too um that's interesting how, how old is your wife much younger than you or she's 10 years younger than me oh okay cool you have a lot in common like is she a nerd too she we couldn't be more opposite, but we love the same, yeah. the same way. We love each other the same way, which, you know, we're like yin and yang, you know, we are, uh, she completes me. Oh man, what well, man, you are, you really are French. You're sweet. If you were any sweeter, man, well, I'd probably get diabetes talking to you. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> I That's love that one. one. Hey, thanks, That's man. One. The other one I could say is, you know, man, well, if you were any sweeter, I'd have cavities because of you. But that's not as good. I think the diabetes one. Shout out the Lord diabetes, Kirk for that one. Yeah. 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 Um. So the uh, the other thing I was going to ask is, in your in your humble opinion, okay, mm -hmm. and you can you can change it up a little bit if you want, but why does everyone on Twitch say I look like Johnny Sins? Go ahead. The bold head, but that's it. That's it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that like you're darker like you know com your complexion is darker your yeah. hair i feel like i've never seen johnny with hair but i feel like he would be a blonde guy more yeah. than a dark hair dude okay uh 
But it, it's a good thing. He's a really good looking guy. He's dude. a fucking so good people, looking guy. You know, if people compare you to him, it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, I'm okay with that. You don't look like Johnny Sins, someone said. That's, uh, yeah. That's, yeah, uh, okay. Who, wait, who do I look like in the industry? Do I look like, everyone has someone that they look like in the industry, right? I don't know, man. Honestly. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but then again, I don't know every man in the industry. You know, I, I pay very little attention to men in the industry. Oh, Simon honest. Santana. Some, uh, fuck. You know who <laughs> Simon Santana is? Uh, wait, the, is that in the adult industry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is he like the... The gay performer that the other day you uh, posted a pic saying like people keep telling me I look like yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. On that pic, on that pic, I see it. Thanks, man. I see it. Appreciate that. On that one pic, you yeah, know. Thank you. Yeah. You look like a Walmart Johnny Sins who came out the asshole, brother. Damn. <laughs> Damn, I don't have a shot. I don't have a shot. A shot in the adult industry. I, I, I. First off, I can't. I don't want to take. I don't want to take dick pills. I and and I know like you were saying, like younger people do that. But I'm sure like over time can cause like serious fucking ED issues. For sure, for sure. <coughs> uh, you, you know, I, how old is uh how old is Viagra now? Oh God, like it's gonna maybe be sixteen, please. seventeen years. No, longer than that, right? No, that it's commercialized. No. Oh, commercialized. I, I, yeah. I started in porn <laughs> 23 years ago. Yeah. There was no pills. None okay. at all. Not at <clears> all. <throat> you know. Uh, so, yeah, Walu says about 20 years. Yeah. Something like that. Damn. That's wild. There's other pills, though, right? Because, like, dude, some guys, they're The cocks. other ones came after, oh, yeah. Uh, it, the, what, have you ever taken Viagra before? No. No, never. 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 What does it do? It just I, pumps more blood to your cock? Yeah, it's a vasodilated dilated uh sorry, it's hard to say it in English. Uh, vasodilator. Uh, so it opens your vein and it uh augment, it, it like uh makes your blood flow bigger. Yeah. So then your cock gets harder. Yeah, it it was actually created for heart disease and turns out gave boner to people. Really? Yeah. No shit. That's wild. Wait, are there any pills for women to take? Uh, I don't know what it would do to women. Like, like a, extra wetness or something? I don't know. I don't think so. No. I mean, I'm sure they have pills, but I'm not... I mean, what would it do? Make their pussy grow? I don't know. <laughs> what? It, why would they need one? You know? Why would they need to make their pussy grow? Yeah. What's your favorite feature on a woman? Uh, it's going to be different in every woman. Really? Like, there's a, yeah, there's no one thing that, it, it, like, each woman, like, I'm not going to look for one thing particularly, yeah. but I'm going to see in each woman that thing that I'm going to be like, oh, I like this with her. Yeah. But, like, what, are you, like, a boob or an ass guy? I like them all, man. Damn, you but, know what? You No wonder women love working with you, man. Well, because you appreciate everyone. You're not pick, you're not picky. It sounds like. Well, it's a good thing when you do porn because you're gonna have sex with every type of women. Yeah. So kind of, uh, you know. Yeah. Be open to anything. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. What is one really interesting thing about yourself that you don't normally talk about on Twitch? Mm. <laughs> what do I not talk about on Twitch? I don't know. I'm pretty open with everything in my life. Like I don't. Like, I don't have regrets or things that, yeah. you, you know, I, I, nothing I'm ashamed of. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Van, thank you for the raid, Van. We were just talking Van. about you. Dude, I'm going to say this, okay? Yeah, sorry. I watched the Austin show with Austin. Yeah. And Van, you should have won. You made the show. You did make if that you, show. If you're, still, if you're still in the chat, Van, you made the show that day. Wow. Human that you know, human centipede. That, that was... <laughs> Did you get a chance to see that after the show? Uh, no, I I, uh, no, I was I was very scared of seeing it actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well I'll introduce everyone. Hey everyone, I'm Joe. I've interviewed Van before. This is my guest Manuel Ferreira. 
Um, he's an adult superstar, and he he likes to say that uh, if you play World of Warcraft, you don't have sex. So welcome <laughs> to the stream, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd oh. rather he'd rather have sex than play World of Warcraft in the same sentence. So, true. It's true. Damn, I want to meet. I want to me. I want the meat on this stud sandwich. Oh, Van wants to be in between us right now. How do you feel Thanks, about that? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Van would destroy Thanks, you, man. Well, I feel like I feel just... like yeah. I feel like I would end up with like a ball gag suspended in the air with rope and one giant dildo in my ass. <laughs> You're just smacking you across the face, calling you a bitch right. the entire time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, man, while I do this uh, on all of my interviews, I open up the chat to be able to ask you questions. Okay. Cool. And this is a point where you can feel comfortable to answer whatever you feel like answering. And if you don't feel comfortable, you can tell them to go fuck themselves. Okay. Thank you, Van. Van says I will sub to you, Manuel. He's a, he's a sweet human being. Van, uh, Van just got partnered actually pretty recently. I'm really happy awesome. for him. Yeah, he worked awesome. really hard on it. So, um, so Manuel, without further ado, I'm going to full screen you here. And I'm going to let um, my chat speak to you. Awesome. Okay. Ooh. Don't get nervous now. Don't get nervous, okay? So let me do this real quick. I put on the elevator music. Okay. Cool, Manuel. Good luck. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. What's your favorite anime and why is it One Piece? It's One Piece because uh, the writer is just a genius. Like, uh, it's not even just in in mangas or animes. Like, like how many authors do you know that can write something for over twenty years and he already put things in place twenty years ago that are only happening now? Like. The characters are just amazing. The story is amazing. The evolution of the characters is amazing, you know. But it doesn't mean I don't like others. You know, I like a lot of other uh, animes. You have a wonderful editor, even though I haven't seen any of your professional work. I'm now a big fan of your Calixta. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Red like kill. That girl, red like kill. If you can tell a girl is a little self-conscious about her body, how can you make her feel confident before sex? Um, hmm. Turn off the light so she can let go. I don't. I don't know. Like, like, uh, I don't think you should bring it up. Like, bringing it up, you know. But uh, as you're doing things with her, maybe you can tell her what you like and why you like it. You know. What is the weirdest fetish you heard of? So I don't think anything. It, like, like. It's not because I'm not into something or that I don't understand something that's necessarily weird, you know? So I don't feel like there are fetishes that it's going to make me smile. But if it's your thing, it's your thing. I'm not going to judge it based on what I like and what I don't like. Nissos, that girl. Which anime character do you wish you could have sex with? Boa Ancock. It's a character from One Piece. And there is a woman called Hitomi Tanaka, who's a Japanese female performer that looks just like her. So I hope one day I can have sex with her. Uh, is this anime collection only yours or do you share it with your family? It's only mine, but of course my kids have access to it. Talking to three girls at the same time, what should I do? Uh, it depends what you want from them. If it's just sex, uh, go for all three of them. If you're trying to get into a relationship, usually run, running after multiple rabbits makes you not catch any of them. <laughs> you and I, brother. Yeah, big secret. I know. What is the gayest thing you have done? Uh, I don't know, man. I've done a lot of, like, gangbangs and... DPs and like double anal, double vag and things like that, but I don't know, like, is it even you know I I have you ever been to Japan? No, never uh, I was supposed to go three times to Japan and all three times something happened that I had to cancel either the day before or the day of and so I ended up not going and I feel like if it happened three times maybe I'm not supposed to go how many times have you came in one day what is a record oh I don't know back 
in my younger days when I used to jerk off a lot, 10, 15, I don't know, man, to the point where I would have the orgasm, but nothing would come out. What is something that you should do, but struggle to motivate yourself to do? And how do you motivate yourself? So I should put a little more effort on writing scripts because I do a type of movie called Gonzo movies, which don't necessarily script, need scripts or storylines, but uh, seeing my wife doing so well with her content, it gave me that rebirth of wanting to do what I used to do when I first started directing movies, which was like creating a story that's going to play with your mind before you even get to the sex. So you can jerk off before even the sex started by watching a situation that's going to turn you on. So cool interview with Joe Rogan. Yeah. You ever met Joe Rogan uh, before, Manuel? Uh, no. <clears throat> Would you no. want to hang out with him sometime or? Uh, sure. Why not? It's cool, dude. Yeah. It's cool, dude. I'm a, I'm a huge MMA fan. So oh, him cool. and I could talk about MMA all day. Hey, hey, I wanted to ask this because I forgot about this. What do you think of incest porn? I hate it. Oh, I, I refuse doing it. I, I think it's gross. The whole family thing doesn't turn me on. And yeah. um, people always ask me, why is there so much? The only reason there is so much incest porn is because of data. It's because of the demon. It's because of the, the searches that people do. Like, for example, I've done scenes in my life where I'm going to work <clears throat> with a girl that's like 23 years old, let's say. Yeah. And it wasn't set up as a incest porn, like, you know, and then they're going to put that video, put it on the hub mm -hmm. and then title it uh, stepdad, fuck stepdaughter. When this scene was never shot like that. Yeah. But they use those keywords <clears throat> because that's what people are looking into and make them click on the videos. That so you think that's but, so it's kind of fucked up then. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's gross. Yeah. yeah. Honestly. And uh, yeah, I think it's gross. It's not my thing at all. Yeah. Was there was there a um, was there was there a wage difference with uh, IR IR porn as well? So that was a big thing that came out during the whole like BLM movement. Yeah. It, is that some girls would charge uh, more money for their first IR scene, yeah. and that created a big thing about how the industry is racist because white girls get more money to fuck a black dude, you know, yeah. on their first time. IR is interracial, by the way. Interracial, yeah. yeah. It's a sensitive subject. I feel like it, it, it's a business <clears throat> and any way you can make more money doesn't make you racist. But I yeah. understand why people would see this as racist. Mm -hmm. But also, let's not forget uh, some of the guys in my industry and their dick size, man. Like, I feel like if you fuck a guy with a dick like that and a guy with a dick like that, maybe the wage should be a little different. No? Yeah, because that's a lot more dick to take. You know, exactly. And it can be painful sometimes. And some of those girls, you know. Yeah, what, um, do, you, what do you think like the, and obviously you, you haven't done any, you haven't done any gay porn before, have you? No. No. So like, how big is your dick? Like inch inch wise, I I never measured my dick. Yeah, me neither. But it's 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 pretty long and but it's very thick. Oh, right? very thick. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like I wouldn't get offended if a girl said, "Manuel's got a huge dick. I, I want more money." Mm -hmm. I'm I'm, sh I'm pretty sure it happened in the in the past. You know. So, I wouldn't get offended. Yeah. I would understand it. I would but, understand it. But for the most part, like, everyone you've worked with loves your dick, right? I think that, I mean, some girls are going to, like, be size queen and they want, like, a yeah. big dick. But I feel like even if you have an average dick or even on the smaller side, turning on the girl is what's going to really do yeah. the job. True. You can go from, like, a, I don't know, like, a four inches. If you turn on, her on, all of a sudden you're eight inches. Yeah. Because in her head, you already did the work. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. That's why, uh, that's why, yeah, that's, that's exactly why. I can see that. I can see that. What's your, what's your favorite meal, by the way? 
besides so pussy. Many, there are so many. There are so many. Like like I'm a sweet guy. I love chocolate, so I eat a lot of like French pastries. Okay. But um in France we have a specialty called raclette is with a melted ch- uh, cheese, a certain type Ooh. of cheese melted on potatoes and ham and a bunch of shit like that. Uh. Fucking. That's the one thing. Every time I eat it, I make myself sick. That's how much I eat. You eat so much of it? So much. So, so much. Are you are you like a health nut? Do you eat like very, are you very picky about what you eat? Uh, I watch what I eat. I have my period. Like right, right now, like I'm, I watch what I eat and yeah. I eat fairly healthy. Uh, every Friday night, I allow myself to eat whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. But, what do you, what do you uh, usually go? What's what's your like go to on a Friday night? Uh, chocolate Nutella and and French brioche is what oh. I love. God, you are just fucking awesome. You know that? Thanks, bro. <laughs> I didn't know that French brioche and Nutella would make me that awesome. But well, I appreciate it. can I share a story with you? Tell me. Do you mind? I went to Paris. Uh, I was like twenty two, and I was with this girl I was dating at the time, and. Uh, I wanted to have the full like French experience. So I got like a cheap bottle of wine and a baguette and cheese. Uh-huh. And I ate the whole fucking baguette because I was so oh. like high. I was high and drunk at the time. And she called me. She's like, if you eat any more of that baguette, you're going to be fat. She like shamed me for eating the baguette. And I was like, no. I was like, how dare you? I was like, first off, this is my first time in Paris and probably my only time for that matter. And she shamed me. She's like, you're going to eat that whole fucking baguette, you piece of shit? <laughs> Plus, you're in Paris. You know you're going to walk a lot. You're going to burn it out so quickly. Yeah. yeah. But, so what, what's the deal with... Because uh, you you've been in New York City before, obviously, right? Yeah. And you've smelt New York City? Like certain it, parts? I, sorry, what? The smell of New York City? I don't know. Like I'm from Paris. Paris and New York are very similar on things like that you know yeah. fast pace people don't have time not everyone is like f- super friendly you know yeah there, there are similarities between new york and paris what? french people do not like americans though uh it's not true it's actually the world that doesn't like it <laughs> <laughs> it's not french people only listen i personally love americans at least half of them the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Wait, Manuel, this is an interesting question. Have you uh, have you ever done like escorting before? No, no, never. no. Because that's something a uh, lot of people do, though, right? Yeah, I got some crazy offers, but I don't know. I never was able to make myself. Yeah, I don't know. There's a thing. I I, I don't know. Like like um, years ago. I was contacted uh, by some rich guy from, like, as assistant from Dubai. Mm. And they were like, hey, uh, so my employer is a huge fan of yours. Yeah. And his dream is to direct a movie where you're the male star, right? Yeah. And he would like to bring you to London and shoot a movie with you as yeah. the star. He's not releasing it. It's only for himself. Yeah. And I was like, uh, you know, and uh, I said, you know what? I'll do it for this much money. How much? Do, do, can I ask how much that was? Yeah, I don't, I don't like talking. About okay, it. okay, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I don't like to say how much. No, no, no. Sure, yeah. Okay. I asked crazy amount. Yeah. Because I thought he would say no. And the guy ended up saying okay. Oh, fuck. You're kidding me. Right? And so I went to London. They bought me first class ticket, brought me in a hotel in the center of London. That shit looked like a castle, like a fucking stupid room. Yeah. I arrived in the afternoon. And the next day we were supposed to shoot. And and then uh, the day after taking my flight and come back. And the day I arrived, the guy that contacted me is like, hey, we have a problem. And I'm like, here we go. Here we Fuck. go. Fuck, I'm in London now, yeah. Right? 
And the girl that we brought decided not to come. And so my employer would like to meet you for dinner tonight. I'm thinking. Oh, you got oh. fucking cucked. Right? I'm thinking, fuck, it's going to be, you know, the guy. I, I see that coming from so far, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm there. I'm like, all right, let's have dinner. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so we go to that restaurant in the hotel in a private room. Mm. So I'm like, shit. And the guy shows up mm -hmm. like early 30s in a suit, good looking guy from Dubai. Yeah. And the, the guy like gives me like a hug right away. I'm like, oh, uh, okay, right, yeah, uh, all right. Uh, you know, and we sit down and the guy apologizes like crazy wow. about the girl not coming <clears throat> mm -hmm. and he's like we're not going to be able to replace her so we're not going to shoot the movie tomorrow i'm very sorry Aww. and he puts the envelope with the cash on the table he's like but i want you to get paid i didn't bring you for nothing you're getting paid and then we ended up having dinner and the guy was a legit fan really like like I thought for sure at one point he's gonna be like trying something. Yeah. And the guy was like, No. The guy knew my porn better than myself. <laughs> You're fucking He was me. like, bro, he was like, Remember when you fucked that girl? It was in Budapest, it was a blue room, the catch was the couch was red, and she was a, wearing a, a a green bikini. Oh like he knew every yeah. details <clears throat> of the scene. Like he would ask me when this girl said this during the, this during the scene was it real or was it planned like he knew details of my scenes he would talk to me about girls i fucked that didn't even remember I fuck her. that's awesome you know and then he ended up giving me a hug thank you sorry and then he left and that's then it the next day i had a day off i went to do a bunch of shopping to bring stuff for my family back yeah and that was it and that was it you ever talk to him again after that? Yeah, he sends me an email here and there to see like how I'm doing, what I'm doing, you wow. know, like what stuff I'm working on. And yeah. I kept contact, but it's like maybe once or twice a year. Yeah. The guy was a class act, honestly. But I, I call my wife that night. I'm like, I've never felt like a hooker in my life Aww. besides tonight. Like, because he literally, and I even told him, I'm like, bro, if we're not doing the movie, like, I don't want to take your money. And the guy insisted. He was like, no, my brother. He was like, my brother, take the money. Like, he was so like, yeah. no, no, dude. And I'm like, yeah. all right, I guess I'll take the money. So it was worth it then. That was probably the, like, yeah. the most expensive dinner you've ever been to before. Dude. Dude. Like, if people pay me to have dinner this much money, I'll, I'll have dinner with some people. That's a lot of, I mean, I assume it's a lot of money. Yes, it was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Probably bought a lot of nice things in London with that money, huh? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> My wife was like, if you feel like a prostitute, I feel like a pimp right now. Oh, shit. Oh, she coordinated it. <laughs> yeah, right. She, like, I always call her my pimp. Yeah. You know. That's cute. And and also, also wonderful at the same time. Yeah. Manuel, do you have any questions for me at all? Honestly, like, I, yeah, like that was the question. Like, like, how was it for you? But you answered that to yeah. be in a relationship with a woman in the adult industry while not being in the industry. Yeah. You know, because I know that there are different ways to be. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, I know it's not easy for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and there and there are other people that enjoy it. Like yeah. I've seen guys that really love knowing that their girl, like th that's their kink, you know. Yeah, watching their girl get fucked. Yeah. Yeah. What's your goal on Twitch? What What's? Do you have projects you want to do? Like, what's your? Um, I do. So you're the 49th person I've interviewed on my Shit. interviews. Yeah, I've had like uh, um, Destiny, uh, Mia Malkova, Andy Milanakis, uh. Van, I had Van Salman here. Uh, shit, call me. You know, call me Carson. Uh -huh. Um, 
I've had so many cool Casey Tron, a lot of really cool people on here before. Uh, okay. And I'm <clears throat> my next one. Hopefully, I don't think it'll be this coming week, but I'm working on uh, Trainwreck and I are coordinating a day a day to bring him on too. Cool. Um, so yeah, man, just I, I really just want to do interviews most more than anything. So, yeah, it's fun, man. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, because it's like I don't I don't like. I have like questions written down and shit, but I don't want to just fucking read off the question list. So I'm, this is more just like a casual conversation than anything. So, yeah, it's easier like that. I yeah. feel like it's better and more like genuine. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this will be up on YouTube after uh, probably a few days. My editor will grab it and edit it and put it up on YouTube, and then awesome. I can uh, I can send it to you if you want to. Yeah. Check it tweet out. It, I'll retweet. I'll send it. Yeah, you don't feel obligated to ever do that, but you. No, it's a pleasure, man. Like like you know. I uh, I don't feel obligated. I wouldn't do it if I felt obligated. Cool, man. I appreciate that. Well, uh, if that's it, I'm going to let you go, but I'd like to stay in touch with you and let's game sometime and kick it. Anytime, man. Anytime. Yeah, really. Hit me up. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, this is Manuel Ferreira, the, uh, the one man whose cock is uh, so beautiful that it's had sex with more women than you will ever probably see in your entire life. Um, and uh, it was an absolute pleasure, man. Thanks for coming on My tonight. My pleasure. Thank yeah, you. And thank, Take it easy. Thank you, Chad, for being here. Yeah, thank you. you. Take care. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more of this kind of content, feel free to subscribe. I'd appreciate that. I also have a Twitch where everything here is filmed live, so feel free to follow me there at twitch.tv forward slash Joe, or follow me on Instagram or Twitter in the description below. Thanks.